So I wanted to give a quick apology. It's been a while since my last episode. And the reason being is uh, I had a cold, or what I thought was a cold, and being stubborn like many men, I didn't go to the doctor, didn't go to the doctor. It's persisted now for two months, um, just about two months, and I went to the doctor yesterday, and unfortunately I have pneumonia. And, uh, but no worries, uh, I got to him probably about a week before hospitalization, so I'm in good shape. The moral of the story is go see your doctor if you have a bad cold that doesn't go away in a couple weeks. I have some really strong antibiotics and I'm supposed to be uh, in bed, but really wanted to, you know, the show must go on. I really wanted to do uh, another show. Today's show of Bob Being Bob, episode number 16, is, is going to be called Getting a Job. And also, under that, I'm going to call it, Hey, Can You Hold My Dog? That's a part of the story that I have when I was in the job market after a very uh, tough economy where I lost my job. Let me uh, stop there. That's it, to give you a little bit of a, uh, my experience in, in this situation. Uh, right after 9-11, I, uh, I was on a trading desk in New York City and I lost my job because we had come to a standstill. The economy just fell out of bed and uh, boy, I learned an awful lot in losing my job. I packed up my things about a month later after 9-11 and I traveled out to San Diego. I had some real estate that did quite well and I spent the next uh, six months or so reading books, quitting smoking, um, you know, I bought a couple of horses and uh, really tried to enjoy myself. You rarely do get a break in your career uh, where you're financially sound enough to take advantage of that and take some rest. So I, I took some much needed rest. That was about um, 11 and a half years ago. And I, again, going back into the job market after that, I learned an awful lot about what, what it takes to get a job and what it takes to actually keep a job. The job that I have now, I've had for the last seven years. It's been a great opportunity. Um, and, uh, and so I just wanted to pass that along to you. Um, some of the things that, uh, just some key points, I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, it's just some things that I learned I wanted to pass along. Um, we've all heard this before. Uh, it is much easier to get a job when you have a job. Even if that job is waiting tables or working at, in my case, Home Depot, the garden department. Um, and, and, and I give this, so many men come to me at the gym mostly and say, Oh, you know, I, I don't have a job, and I can't, you know, they all, everybody's looking for a job at the exact same level or higher, exact same money or higher, and I'll, i got to tell you, in my experience, that's unrealistic. And in this type of economy, 10% unemployment, it is extraordinarily difficult to get a job, because employers naturally say, well, if you lost your job, then you were one of those that weren't one of the key personnel in your company, and there's a stigma. Uh, so I suggest, and, and then I talk to women, too, saying, you know, my husband just won't take any job, he's got to have this you know, perfect job and they're not there and you'll, you'll end up being unemployed forever. Men, please take whatever job is available. What I did, and it worked out great, was I took a job at Home Depot in the guard department for $7 an hour. I was a 36 hour a week part-timer with no benefits and boy, was it a humbling experience and, it, and I needed it. And while I was working there, I was standing up front in my orange apron and my largest client was actually, I covered San Diego and my dad lives there and that's why I moved out there. I had some connections out there, etc. And um, one of my biggest clients in San Diego uh, came up to me while I was at Home Depot. He tapped me on the shoulder, not knowing it was me, from behind and said, hey, can you hold my dog while I go into, into the store? And I turned him and I, I would say this even now if someone asked me to hold their dog. Sure, I'll hold your dog, go on. I turned. The look on his face when he saw that it was me, and I was a pretty high level executive at the time that he knew me just a few months earlier. I actually visited him one month prior to that. He was my last client visit before I left my job in uh, New York City. And um, the look on his face is like, whoa. And he knew I had an identical twin, and he thought it was the identical twin. He said, oh, you're Bill, right? I've heard so much about you. I said, no. No, I won't say his name, though, but uh, I said, so and so, um, no, it's me, Bob. I, you know, I just saw you a month ago. You know, how are things? And he was blown away. And I said, look, I lost my job in New York City and I had to get a job. So always wanted to work at home. Always thought Home Depot would be a cool place to work. I got a job in the guard department, even better outside all day. And this is where I am. And that job at Home Depot uh, is, was a tad amount in getting my next high paying job in San Diego. When I sat down with the employer and I was telling him about my background and everything, I told him about the Home Depot. Yeah, I went to work for Home Depot. It was the only job available. They basically said, you're hired on the spot. They're like, nobody does that. I, uh, wow, what a humbling thing you did. And yeah, and you know what? If you do that, the same thing will happen to you. Someone, you'll bump into somebody. It's a great networking too. Home Depot, waiting tables, all great networking opportunities. So that's what I did and I ended up getting a job, you know, for quite almost the same money that I got in New York City for, work, for working at Home Depot for seven, seven months. I gotta tell you, uh, I was hauling cinder blocks the first day I was there. 
a whole pallet into the back of this guy's truck. And I was like, after that, I, I was done. I was sore in every part of my body for a, for a week after that. I thought, I can't do this. And you know what? You, you adapt to your environment. A week later, I was slamming. I did like eight trucks in a row and I felt fine. I lost like 15, 20 pounds. And I thought I'd never be able to do that. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna kill me if I gotta do cinder blocks. You know, every day, I'm not gonna make, I'm just not physically, I've been, I've been sitting at a desk too long. I'll tell you, a couple weeks later, I could fill a pickup truck faster than anybody. You know, I started to get muscly again, and the, the, uh, the things that, that I never used at the desk, you know, my muscles came back, and um, it was a great opportunity, too. I had a lot of fun doing it. And so I ended up getting a job from there, and, and so, again, I can't stress this enough, Take whatever jobs available, and then work your way up. You know, you'll have you'll get so many more opportunities when you're sitting home in this economy. You'll never get a job. It'd be very, very difficult to do so. Um, the next bit of advice I would give is be persistent. And I have another story related to this. I wanted to work for this one company in San Diego so bad. I pursued them for two and a half years. I called HR once a week and changed a little bit of my resume. Oh, let me reset it. I changed the L at the you know, and and every couple of weeks I called them up to remind them that I wanted to work for that company, and. Uh, they uh, they were posting jobs, a lot of jobs on their website, and they had art senior art director uh, each job that was posted. And I submit, I filled out all the forms again for like a tenth time, and I submitted. The HR people at this point knew me, and they said, "Oh wow, we didn't know you have any art experience." And I said, "Well, I don't, but if you hire me, I'll be the best darn art director you ever have. I'll immerse myself. I'll go to every school and class you require, and I'll become your senior art director, and you'll never have a better one." And that right there, at that point, and that was, I think I was after about a year of pursuing them, they knew that I, my, in my heart, I wanted to work for this company. And so, persistence, persistence, persistence. Everything, almost everything valuable in my life, including my wife and family, I've gotten through being persistent. And it's so important. You have to be persistent in the giant. It's, 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 it's frustrating, you know, you're gonna get a lot of no's, but every no brings you one step closer to a yes. I tell the guys that I train, I'm. Uh, I'm the senior vice president of sales of my firm, and they get no's and they're frustrated. I'm like, uh-uh, you should be happy when you get a no, because there's a certain amount of no's. It's all a numbers game where you're gonna get a yes. You get 30 no's, and then you get a yes, 30 no's. So you wanna get those no's out of the way to get to the yeses, you know? And so I eventually worked for that company, and, uh, and it was a really great experience, and it taught me that you can work for whatever company you want if you pursue them. You know, because and, and employers love persistence because they know that you're going to be that type of employee when you work for them. You're going to be very persistent. You're going to be a go-getter, and uh, most employers and most people like that type of person. So uh, that really worked in my advantage. Some housekeeping tips, um, and this is just for me. Some things that have worked for me: keep your interview at one page, unless you're a specialist. If you're a doctor, lawyer, my wife's a, a pharmacy, a pharmacy manager, and she's got all pages and pages of accreditations and, and associations and that sort of thing. Me, I'm a, I'm a senior uh, sales manager, and um, so my, my resume can be one page. I've looked through so many resumes and hired so many guys, and the three pagers, I can't even, I, I look at it. And, uh, the second thing is, is um, try to stay at a job when you make a commitment to take a new job, unless it's like the Home Depot job, the, the, the transition job, when you get back into your career field, try to make a commitment to stay with the job for a minimum of two years, even if you don't like it. Because I cannot tell you, it's sitting in a room with, with a bunch of guys, and I've been doing it for the last 15, 20 years, and reviewing resumes, two years or less on a resume at any given job looks like someone uh, is not loyal, someone that, that doesn't, it, you know, for whatever reason, <coughs> excuse me, um, couldn't stay at that job for more than two years. And I have one on there, and I have an explanation, but my, I've had lengthy job um, job tours, uh, eight years at Merrill Lynch, four years at the next firm, uh, you know, seven years at this firm, and it really looks good on my resume. People see that long, you know, the commitment that you make to those companies, and it really bodes well for you. Um, take as many interviews as you can, even if they're silly jobs. Interviewing is so valuable. Uh, they're excellent in, in learning to be a better interviewer and in learning how to, I mean, I took so many interviews and right now I'm an expert interviewer. I can answer all those little tricky, you know, um, uh, 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 what do they call them, you know, questions, loaded questions, uh, better than most anybody because I, I've taken so many interviews and you never know. Someone might say, you know, it might be an interview for a job in, 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 in a, a smoothie place and they might say, you know what? We don't think you're well suited to be one of the servers. We actually 
you might be well suited to be the president of our company. You never know. I've seen it before. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a hundred times. Where someone goes in and they're so impressed, they're like, well, actually, you know, you might be a good fit for an executive management position that we have open. So, uh, in all of the, my next tip would be, in all this, be humble. Like I said, take whatever job is available. It's a humbling experience, but it, it's such a testament to your character. When you take a job like Home Depot or waiting tables when you're in your mid-30s or early 40s, it is, I'll tell you, it impresses me when someone comes to me. I did it when I experienced that hiring people. I almost, you're done, you seal the deal. If you if you waited tables for a year in between your career and you come to me, you know you know that's gonna be a good employee and employers know that uh, better than, uh, than anyone. One final thing I wanted to touch upon, I'm sorry I'm hoarse because of my pneumonia, um, is, once you accept this fact, and the, if you are working now and you're underemployed or working not in your field and you're just taking one of those jobs, it's, it's just a fact. And the sooner you accept this, the easier life will be. I've had so many friends come to me frustrated, complaining. During poor economies with high unemployment, where there's a large pool of talented candidates, companies inherently treat their employees, I wouldn't say badly, I'd say more harshly, I guess, and it's just human nature. When there's you know, 20 or 30 people that are more qualified, have better educations, have more experience, banging down the door, human nature is you don't really, you don't really appreciate what you have. And on the other hand, during very tight economies, uh, you'll see employees are, you know, beef up the 401k and are very, very nice to their employees. And it's just the way it goes. I tell my friends, look, you know, it's just like that guy at work that's after you, that's trying to get you fired, or who constantly is telling on you, or or, or, or gives you a hard time. You leave that job, that's it. there's another person just like that at the next job. Actually, there's always going to be someone like that at uh, at the job, and so you have to you have to get to a point where you can work with these circumstances and deal with that. Me, I just kiss their butt. You know, bring them candy or whatever their favorite thing is. Ask them about their weekend, make them feel good. And then they get off my case, you know? I mean, really, really make them feel good and make them look good in front of the boss. I'll do things and let them take credit. And boom, problem solved, you know what I mean? And so, uh, that's it, one final thing. One, don't give up. Because when you give up, there's a guy standing next to you that's not giving up and he's gonna get that position. Don't give up, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it, persistence will pay off. It's paid off in every, almost every single scenario in my life where I've been persistent and have not stopped, I've got what I wanted. And that's it. Um, thanks for listening to Bob Being Bob, Getting a Job. Hey man, can you hold my dog? Which I thought was great. And a great part of the story is that when that happened, I smiled wildly when I held his dog. And then he didn't want to give me his dog. He said, no, 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 I can't, no, no, you know. And I said, come on, I'll hold your dog. Go on that Home Depot, come on. I work here now, I'm a Home Depot person, you know? And that's it. So thanks for listening. Hopefully I have a new episode out here. I already have it written. And we'll see you real soon. Bye.